Well, Professor Clements with you. As we talk about the celestial sphere, as we look out at the sky, uh, there appears to be a sphere around the Earth, and this would be called our celestial sphere. So it looks like I'm going to have to zip through some earlier uh, slides that were uh, in a previous video. Oh, our celestial sphere, it's an imaginary surface. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, people believed that it was a real surface, uh, that the stars were embedded in, and somehow the planets and the moon moved around on this sphere. Uh, won't go into those details, but it's an imaginary sphere. There is no actual surface, a big object around the Earth with the Earth at the center, but that was uh, some thinking about it. Uh, from our point of view, we see the sun, the moon, the planets, moon, the stars, you know, comets, etc. Uh, they appear to move around on this celestial sphere, around on the sky. It's the sky being our celestial sphere. And as I say, the thousands of years ago, astronomers thought that these objects were on the celestial sphere. Uh, later in the in the course, we'll uh, talk about how that. Uh, was corrected. Uh, but the celestial sphere, as a, as a uh, purpose of discussion where things are located in the sky, if you want to call your neighbor, um, or you call your friend in California, uh, we can use the celestial sphere as a map to locate objects on the sky. And I want to go over that just a little bit. There's some special designations on the celestial sphere. You know the Earth has an equator that uh, we have northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. If we would extend the Earth's equator out um, onto the sky and uh, trace a line around the sky, we would have what's called the celestial equator. And this divides the sky into two halves. There's the northern part of the sky and there's the southern part of the sky, whether we're above the celestial equator towards the North Pole and Polaris, would be our northern hemisphere of the sky or if we have a uh, object below that celestial equator in the southern half of the sky. Uh, the North Celestial Pole is that point on the sky that's directly above the Earth's rotation axis, above the Earth's North Pole. And the star Polaris is very close to, uh, to that point on the sky for a few hundred years. It's very close. Uh, We'll talk about that later, and we we'll talk about the concept of precession. Uh, read ahead if you would like to do that. But we have a convenient object right now, the Polaris, the star Polaris, very near the North Celestial Pole. But that's a special point of reference on the sky. Then the term zenith. The zenith now is more attached to a local observer, and as I look straight up onto the celestial sphere, there'd be some star near my zenith. Someone in California, I live in Nebraska, someone in California would have a different star near their zenith. So the zenith is just the local observer looking straight up. It's the point on the sky directly above the observer. And objects uh, in one location on the Earth at, that we see near the zenith, that object will not be near the zenith for someone far away around the Earth. Uh, the meridian line. The meridian is a line, if you look directly south at the horizon, that south point, and draw an imaginary line that comes up to the zenith, and then goes through the north celestial pole, and then to the north point on the horizon, that line is the meridian, and it divides the sky into an eastern half and a western half. Uh, the sun is in the eastern half of the sky during the morning, and after noon, local noon, when the sun crosses the meridian, then the sky is in the, the sun is in the western half of the sky. So our meridian line divides the sky into two parts for the local observer. Uh, again, my meridian line is going to be different than the meridian for someone in California. Uh, we'll ha there will have be different objects on the, my meridian compared to someone in California. The sun is on my meridian before it is on the meridian for someone in California, about two hours difference. Uh, so, celestial equator, extend the Earth's equator out onto the sky, north celestial pole, point directly above the Earth's north pole, zenith, a point at the top of my sky, and meridian, a line that goes from south to zenith to the north pole and down to the north point, celestial sphere. 
a little illustration of celestial fear, a, a slide from Wikipedia. Uh, the Earth is rotating underneath that uh, celestial sphere, so it's a kind of a fast Earth, but uh, the Earth carries the observer around. So objects, we see different objects at different time, uh, different constellations at different time of night, because the Earth is rotating underneath this celestial sphere. Um, so this is more the more modern view. We'll talk about geocentric, heliocentric models in the future lecture. The celestial sphere, an imaginary surface on which we can uh, map out the stars, map out the constellations. There's a little globe that has a celestial sphere, nice artwork on it uh, in this uh, library. And you, know, you have to imagine yourself with the Earth at the center of this globe and looking out, and here's what uh, could be seen. It's nice artwork of uh, mythologically, uh, uh, hopefully, consistent figures uh, drawn on here for the constellations. So that's the end of the discussion on celestial sphere, imaginary surface in space that uh, we can map out objects on, and we can refer to special lines as we observe the sky, uh, the meridian, and uh, talk about uh, east, west, north, and south, celestial equator, zenith. We'll do more of that in future uh, discussions. So keep reading and asking questions.